Okay, back at it again. This is week nine of the Crazy Beautiful Podcast. Yes, yes. And we thank God for that. Yeah. That is, that's God. Right? Do you guys remember when we were just talking about, yeah, we should record our Bible studies and all the great things that come out of it, how we just wanted to share with others. And we, you know, Mm -hmm. we took what he's like, what do you have in your hands? I'll say it again. (laughs) And we gave it to him. So it's pretty cool. Um, So as always, we're going to start off with a prayer. So who would like to pray to open us up today? Mom has a, she's eating oxtails. Let me tell y'all something. I know real quick. I come downstairs to do the podcast, and I have my little lemon tea, trying to be cute, and she has a whole plate of food. I was like, oh, she in food? She was like, oh, the oxtails are upstairs. Oxtails. You could go get some. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but, but sis, oh my gosh, if- all of our meals have been kind of shifted because we get up so much later, so we only do brunch and dinner. Leonard. Leonard. <laughs> Leonard, <laughs> Charlie, <Yeah>. go. <laughs> yes, but oh, it's okay. Goodness. I'll pray. It's fine. Thank you, right. Heavenly Father. We come to you today. We first of all thank you. Thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for this beautiful weather. We thank you for health. We thank you for clarity and peace and joy and laughter. And we just ask that within this time that we share together today, that you open our hearts, open our minds. We want you to speak. We beg of you to send your presence into this time that we share together. And we just ask that you lead us and guide us in the things that you'd like us to say and the things that you'd like us to hear um, in today's gathering. We thank you. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, name. amen. Amen. All right, so ladies, we were just discussing our week a little bit before we got on the podcast, having some mommy moments. Um, And sorry for the jingling bells because my sister's dog, Charlie Chaps, has apparently, he's from the marketing department, for those of you... (laughs) I don't not know. My dog, no, not that. Other sisters. Yes, Kiara has dropped her dog off and left. <laughs> She's calling to check on him. Um, go on, chaps. Oh goodness. Go on. They're gonna hear you breathing. Come on. Come on. Ew. That is not any of us breathing into that microphone. That was the dog. Anyways, so how I know Sis was sharing a little bit about her week. Her her daughter, she sent us to our family group chat the cutest picture. Her daughter had what was it a makeshift doctor's office she had made? Yeah, and she I, had. We, I have to be her best friend right now. Um, I'm realizing <laughs> every day I'm not a good five year old, but <laughs> you do your best. She's got so much energy. She's so creative. Um, so I came out of one of my work calls. And she had decided to make a doctor's office and had lined up every single doll that she had from our living room to, like, the back wall of our kitchen. And they were just all lined up. And we were making jokes about how they were, like, not social distancing. Like, they were, like, stacked on top of each other. And nobody had It was hilarious. <laughs> it was hilarious. I was like, if one of them coughed, they're all going down like dominoes. They were right on top of each other. It was hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> And then I was telling them, sharing with them that my son has been having some struggles with his Toy Story toys, which, uh, I mean, decapitating toys, trying to throw others in the trash. I just pray for Jackson. (laughs) Jackson Michael, (laughs) he is a creative, creative kid. And he's starting to talk more and more, which is so exciting and scary at the same time. Oh, yeah. Um, But... We had a really awesome week this week, and I know, um, Kiara, you had some breakthroughs. Mom had some breakthroughs. I had some breakthroughs. Um, And my dad, with the business, had several really huge breakthroughs this week. And God is really, really moving and speaking. I thought about this morning how I remember telling the children, 
talking to them about how does God speak and can you actually hear him and just sharing with them my journey of learning that until you draw yourself in close, no, you're not going to hear him because he's not going to yell and just telling them, yeah, he's speaking all the time. It's just if he's not familiar to you, if you don't, you're not going to hear him. It's the same as if my mom were to say my name in a crowd of people, I could hear her even if she was whispering. Whereas somebody I just met the other day, they could be calling out and I could be like, I don't know who they're calling out because I don't know their voice. I don't know them. So, but okay. So ladies, I'll let you guys share your, your breakthroughs of the week Sarah, or scriptures. You can go first because I'm going to have to grab my phone to do that. Oh. Um, Woo. <laughs> This week was definitely, um, it was a good week, there were definitely highs and lows, and I appreciate being able to, um, definitely have God with me through this week. I know that it's been a difficult week for a lot of people that I care and love about, and, um, you know, I do find my joy and my purpose in God, so one of the things that God really talked to me about this week is where does my hope lie? Mm. Um, if my hope is lying as a man... Then I can find disappointment for man and flawed. Yeah. But with God, I can have mercy on others to love them where they're at and mm. to fix my eyes on Him mm. because He's my ever present help in the time of need. Amen. And so that was like spoken to me through my devotionals throughout the week and the scriptures that were brought to me. Um, and the songs that like, I was able to listen to this week that I'll talk with you guys about later. Mm. But there were some. There are definitely some harder times. Like, I got so excited at this one moment with Ari because, you know, it's summertime. I'm not sure when she'll be able to go back to school because she's a kid who does have asthma, so we're not um, rushing right. to put her back into, into school, into daycare, or to, into her uh, first year of kindergarten. Yeah. I found all these really cool summer camps that have to deal with things that she would love. Like, they're all free. Um, all in line for a week, and there's a university that's holding them. I'll give a message through the name of the place if anybody's interested. Cool. They do, they do, they do like theater camps for kids, and um, detective camps, and drawing, and building things, and all the things that she's into. So I went to tell her about that, and she just broke down and started crying because she said that she seeing these things makes her feel like she'll never go back to school again, and I don't mm. know when that would happen or what that would look like. So I really had to lean on God in those moments yeah. um, to comfort her and keep my own strength. And um, one of the things my one of my good friends reminded me of is, again, just filling your vessel because if you're filling your vessel with good, then in those moments, those tender moments, when others really need you, That's then so you have good to pour out to yeah. them. But if I you know, wasn't taking care of myself, wasn't spending time with God, it just was physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually but and she came to me with that or had that reaction, I probably would have reacted much differently towards her out of frustration for trying to do something that was good for her and um, things are not really appreciated just get really sad or not be able to comfort her but she needs it because I need so much comfort myself. So yeah. just another reminder of self care. Um, you know, spending time with God and being able to make sure that we're okay as we have others who really are dependent on us as well. Mhm. Mm yeah, yeah. That's I was just looking through and I got this week since I got these this chronological Bible study workbook that is the bomb. I love it because it helps me to like with my morning devotionals because before you guys can't see us obviously you're over the uh, audio here but I would have just little pieces of paper that I'm like in a little notebook that I was scribbling um you know just the thoughts and the scriptures that would come or that would hit for the week to you know remember them for today and this book actually just provides me the place not only just to record those scriptures but the thoughts the prayers and just break all that down so that I have it and then instead of me being like where's that <laughs> piece of paper I still have some sticky notes and stuff because I'm unorthodox like that but um the scripture that I had the other day was first Corinthians three sixteen through 17 do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, and you are his temple. Let no one deceive himself. 
If anyone among you seems to be wise in the world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise, for the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. And what I wrote was that um, I was talking about how our body is, they are temples. And that we have been given that steward over, so to take your health seriously, um, what you eat and drink and watch and even listen to. Um, and that God's ways are the polar opposite of the fallen world. And true wisdom is only found in God. So that, I mean, with you saying, with you talking about filling your vessel and then just being really mindful of taking care of yourself. That scripture, that was the one that I just went over. Yeah. Yeah. So, but mom, did you want to? Well, or Kiara, are you done? Because I don't want to cut you off. No, <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm done. That was that was probably like the biggest thing this week. Is just any time that our our happiness or our calm um, was disturbed by sadness, and that you know it happens. I think that at this time, when everybody's in quarantine, um, can't expect things to always be happy. Um, I guess one other thing I will say is that last night when I was with Ari. She started crying because she misses my brother, um, mm. and she'll do that from time to time. It's something that, you know, I'm, I've been working through with my daughter. Um, we all mourn a death very differently, and our family were very rocked by what happened to him. Um, yeah. And so seeing that in her, still, it can, it can break my heart. But what I told her is when she started crying, um, was it's okay to be sad, because it is. And I think that it's good for people to be reminded of that, that there is a time for everything in this life. And mm -hmm. it is okay to have those times when you want to be sad and, you know, just um, lean on God in those moments as well. But it is, it is okay. You don't want to hide those feelings. Yeah, you definitely. And I don't know, did I share with you that me and Dad had a moment where, you know, we were talking, it circled back around to Mike, and I shared with him about the whole Jesus wept thing. And I said, Dad... I didn't know he wept over Lazarus and he, this is the dude he was about to bring back to life. It's like he didn't cry because he'd never see him again. He cried because he lost him. And he cried also because, you know, I was reading into that this week, watching Mary and her sister mourn, he was overcome with empathy. Like he knows and he feels and it's okay for us to cry. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like I told you on my birthday, I had a moment and I, I randomly will have moments where... I think of my brother and it's not that I'm crying because I'll never see him again but I've lost him for a little bit and it hurts so yeah emotions are real they're not real I mean they're not real <laughs> emotions are real and it's a part of the journey yeah it's a part of the journey it is yep so did you want me to take it on or yeah you can all right because I think I only have a short um something I guess I um I was I've <laughs> I've been kind of like staying up at night she's been um <laughs> Netflix and chilling I said it she has been Netflix and chilling my mom was like I was binge watching I said my mom is binge watching I am done no it, it's just <laughs> It's really cool though because I um on Prime Video on that station I found a lot of documentaries and different things. I get excited about historical um historical films and mm -hmm. different things like that. But I also was struck with I got um, I saw an old Sinbad, a Sinbad, uh, <laughs> you know Sinbad, the comedian, and I was like, okay, let me just turn this on, and he just had me cracking up. So if you get a chance, you know, take a look at Sinbad yeah. and make you laugh. Um, the other thing is, <laughs> I also watched a special on the Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, I am a huge um how would you say an enthusiast or someone who uh who gets enthused about the dead sea scrolls You're a historian i am a historian and 
Mm. Um, and there was a show that was about the Dead Sea Scrolls insofar as where they are now with their findings of the different things that are going on with the Dead Sea Scrolls and what they, dis you know, they were talking about the different discoveries about um, the writings and everything. But the main thing that hit home for me from where I you know, so far as my understanding what God has led me with about the Dead Sea Scroll is still still the same. Um, but it was the thing about the Dead Sea Scrolls, okay? Let me get to it and spit it out. The Dead Sea Scrolls were basically found in 1947 at the same time that World War II had ended. Okay, so what do those two have to do with each other? Yeah, right, you know? Okay, so Let's start with the end of World War II. Um, you know, Hitler. That is my least favorite World War. I'm just yes, put that out there. yes. Well, Hitler, Hitler was actually of a Jewish descent mm -hmm. and did not like that. Mm -hmm. But what happened to Hitler was while he was in class, he was in an artist artist class mm -hmm. and um, he wanted to become an artist. Um, the artist teacher told his, told him that his work wasn't good. Mm -hmm. And he got upset about that. And the full rage went out against the Jews because that was his teacher, that was the setting that he was in so, mm -hmm. so far as learning. Um, he actually started stealing artwork, um, hiding it because it was found. And if you ever um, watched, what is it called, the Mountain Men or, or something, I'll find the title and Tracy will put it in the notes. But anyway, um, he stole lots of artwork and pieces of Jesus, you know, different artworks and different things like that. But the thing was, he was denying who he was mm -hmm. and he didn't want anyone else to see it. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But there was something down rooted, and we don't know exactly what all was going on with Hitler. Right. But this was one thing that was something that did trigger Bester. him. Yes, yes. And so that right there, and him denying his ancestry, mm -hmm. and then turning around and killing millions of Jews. Yeah. Because of his, that was the enemy. Actually, mm -hmm. you, we need to understand, the enemy will cause you to think and feel, and if you just go along with it and be held by a leash by him, mm -hmm. he will lead you down a road of destruction totally, mm -hmm. to kill, steal, and destroy. Yep. And that is what happened with Hitler. I, You know, no one on this earth is... A totally evil, outright person. Right. You right. Know? As hard as it is yeah. for us to, and, you know. And it's just how they're led. Yep. That they're led into the destruction road. Yep. That's true. And they can change it. They can accept Christ or not. But the other thing that happened in 1947, guys, was a high-powered microscope was discovered. Hmm. It was discovered within that same year. And it was looked upon. They started to, you know, you know, look at different things. And one of the number one things that they looked at was a cell. Now, you know, back then we believed that goo to you. That's what we were. It was goo to you. Either it was from the animals, either, either it was from this. And, you know, we dictated from that. Mm -hmm. But what this high-powered microscope showed us was... Oh my gosh, there's, there's a lot more going on in, in there. this cell mm -hmm. than just this goo. There are all kinds of things. And that's when they found DNA. Now, DNA points us to who we are. Huh. And where are we today? So the DNA, it points us to who we are. We are. So all that Hitler was doing and all that other, all people, and, and Darwin. Right. Darwin's, Darwin's anger was festered from, I think he either lost his daughter or his son. Yeah. And he, he, he did not, he did not believe that that comes from a good God. Mm. How could a good God take 
my child. Mm. And so with that, he went into his understandings of where we began. Mm. Because he did not believe that we began with a hand of a God who would allow his child to be killed or she actually they died from a disease and and he didn't believe that that was a loving God it's like we said it's impossible to acknowledge God as long as you lean on your own understanding on your own understanding and then he can't direct your path yeah, yeah and he'll lead you all kinds of ways but I you know that was a show that I watched and and watching that and knowing these things um about the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls basically popped up and said, yes, the Bible was real, because at that point in time, in 1947, there was a lot of things going on, saying that the Bible wasn't real, there were a lot of contradictories, different things like that, but then when these Dead Sea Scrolls pop up, and they're from before Jesus, and then they state, actually the Isaiah Scroll totally is the total whole scroll in the museum that they have there in Israel, and that one, is like okay so wow. what do we say about that you know yeah. and um so i i just say you know just trust in god mm -hmm. you i you know there are a lot of ups and downs in our lives and we all know that today mm -hmm. but through it all god is our standard yeah. He stays. He he doesn't he doesn't move and shift and sovereign. change and say, Oh well it's not that now. It's now this. No. You know what? The Bible that we read from today is the same Bible that the Dead Sea Scrolls pulled up. <laughs> That's the same word. The same word before Jesus. Mm -hmm. The same word that connects from Genesis to Revelations, which Get this, the New Testament was written after Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, hello, all of this collectively together, the Word of God. And I thank Him, I thank Him, I thank Him so much. Amen. Um, um, but yeah, I've been watching that, and I've been watching uh, just different people. And one thing I wanted to mention, a uh, saying that I heard by Corey Ten Boom, she said, and it may not be quite right, so, you know, I, this is just what I collected from it. Um, the devil says, since I can't make them, make them. I'll make them busy. <laughs> That's a quote by Corey Ten Boom. Facts. Where's the lie? <laughs> yes. Okay, so <laughs> that was really, really, really dope. So, uh, this week in my devotional, I actually, I recorded one little moment and I posted it on Facebook, but I actually did not end up sharing it back to the podcast page here on YouTube, which I am going to start doing because that shortens the time of you know, because during the week, I thank God, but he, it's like almost like, it's so cool, guys. And I know a lot of you, especially, you know, the ones that have like that, you have that devotion time. You know what I'm talking about. It's just like this stuff starts coming, coming, coming. And you're like, yo, you almost want to like grab some and be like, do you see this? This is crazy. Yeah, she it to me every morning. I know. And I just started doing it to my mom. <laughs> Because initially, like, I would send a text. We had this text stream with Mom, Kiara, and Siobhan. And then I felt like I was flooding the text with stuff. And then I was like, I, I can't do that to them. That's just, like, flooding them. Everyone was like, here she goes it's again. Good. It's but good. I had to get it out. So the thing that he brought to me this week was I was thinking about how we Google everything. If your leg hurts or if you have a cough, your eye, whatever, we Google everything. And the thought that came to me is, is God your first Google or has Google become your God? Do you believe what Google says before you believe the word? And I was like, ooh, you're like, I'm just in there like, yo, that's really deep. So that's what I shared on my thing. And I was like, it's, and the more I thought about it, I was like, yeah, because we Google, everybody's like, did you Google it? That's the first thing people say. They don't say, did you, did you pray about it? Did you, 
did you Google it? <laughs> and it, it, the shift in perspective and the way that God can shift your perspective when he becomes your first Google. Now, he may tell you to go Google it. <laughs> you know what? He might say, go Google it. <laughs> so, don't, don't be surprised. <laughs> And then from there, from that, is God your first Google? And I started to think about, of course, I go down the rabbit hole. Now, I think last week I shared, did I share the story about Daniel and the writings on the wall? I did. Yeah. So off of the... Daniel, Daniel. <laughs> he doesn't have a song. David's David. like, hold up. David said, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Kiara made up a song for Daniel. I'm sure he's like, whoop, whoop. I got a song he's now. Cool. He is. Right? So, this is the thing. I was thinking about the fact of how the king was having, well, he had a vision and a dream that disturbed him to the point that he couldn't sleep. And so, he called everybody else. He called the magicians. He called the sorcerers. He called the experts to come and decipher his dream. And nobody could tell him. And his last resort, his wife just happened to say, Hey, the guy Daniel, he was able to decipher your dad's dreams. He's a man of God. So ultimately, he went through everything and everybody else before he had to circle back around to God for the answers once again. And I was like, this is something I've done in my own life. And so I could I, I could just relate to it. And I was like, yo, and it's not the only time in the Bible that you have these great men and they have all these resources and all this stuff at their fingertips, much like we do today. We have all this information at our fingertips and we go there first and then God, we might sprinkle a little God on it. And it's like, okay, if you would come to me first, I could simplify this so much. And it seems too simple. We want it to be more complicated. But, man, and I can only speak, I always say, from my own journey. Thinking back on times when, you know, oh, the answer to this or the answer to that. No, I should do this. I should do that. Let me look up this. Let me look up that. Let me da-da-da-da. Oh, well, I'm this way because I was born in this month. That's sorcery. I got to, um, oh, well, this person, they've done this before and they're experts. Okay, well, this this website is certified and blah, 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 blah. You're doing all that. Come to me first. Come to me first. Let me be your first Google. It was right back to that. And I was like, okay, I see what you're doing here, God. So then from then we spin off into Joseph. Because I was like, Joseph was another one where the king had a dream. And it says specifically that the king, he they ran down a list of people that the king called to come and decipher this dream. And once again, it was the experts and the sorcerers and whoever was in the world who could tell him what's the answer how should I move and they were like we don't we have nothing much like with this what we're going through right now we got nothing and God is like when are you gonna come to me because I could give you the answer and why does it seem so silly to us to go back to the one who created it all to ask these answer but to go to the things he created and ask them for the answer it's just, you know, I'm just in there like, okay, okay, okay. So Joseph, in his situation, he again was. And I like, totally mixed those two up with Joseph and, and um, Daniel. Oh, you so you did say. Co- I, I was like, <laughs> you done gave Daniel a song and a coat. Oh he is having a good day. <laughs> <laughs> So from there, you know, I'm thinking about Joseph, and yeah, Joseph was in the same situation. Well, one of the other things, I told you guys I'm reading this book by Miles Monroe, um, The Purpose of Praise and Worship. This book is amazing. 
and it goes into the I'm now at the part where he's talking about the different forms of praise and worship but at one point he was talking about Paul and Silas and how they were imprisoned and I talked about that before but what I started to think about this morning is what are all the other things that Paul and Silas could have focused on and what are all the other things that they could have said in the place of praising God and what they were going through they could have sat there and talked to each other about how are we going to get out of this it's not right that we're in jail they could have sat there and asked everybody in the prison what are y'all in here for they could have sat there and talked about how terrible it smelled in there and it's dark this is scary this is not right but just the fact that they chose to praise the Lord through it the shackles not only fell off of them but everybody who was around them got set free and I was thinking about how I was telling you, I was like, sometimes, Mom, it seems like I feel like we're Paul and Silas, like, just sitting here singing. Because anybody who knows me, I sing through everything. Like, housework, headphones in, singing. Working, singing. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's not quiet singing. When we were little, we would have to clean up the kitchen every night, and it would just turn into a full blown concert. A concert? <laughs> I'm still the same singing it's always singing so in jeremiah 19 17 and 18 the lord specifically tells them to send for the wailing women send for the wailing women and the lord will hear them and it wasn't just the wailing women it was the wailing women who had lost a child and i'm sitting there and i'm thinking about the fact that you know we just keep singing our song. We just keep singing praises. And again, giving all praises back to him. The praise and worship. And there are days when I throw my headphones on and start singing. And I know it does. It's like crazy. It's like, you've had a terrible day at home. Nothing's going right here. You know, it could have been whatever. And it doesn't make sense. But it's, I'm telling you guys, as soon as I throw those headphones on... And I just let the spirit take me away. I feel 20, 50 times better. But not only that, you will notice that the conversation, well, I noticed that the conversations around me changed. And just every like the spirit just moved through. So Paul and Cyrus, Silas in that prison and us, what we're going through right now or whatever your situations may be. Are you, help me out with the word, mom. We could not think of this word. Are you a hostage or are you a weapon? This all depends on you. You can be a hostage or a weapon in whatever situation you're in. If you choose to allow the enemy to make you a hostage, then you're a hostage. But if you choose to focus on the Lord and let him use you, you've now become a weapon. And it's not just a weapon that will set you free, but everybody around you could get set free. So I was like, okay, let's go. <laughs> so that was, I mean, and with Joseph too, Joseph was another one. I thought about the fact when he was in prison and the two dudes were in there with him. I was like, Joseph could have been like, man, I've been from the pit to prison now. He didn't know he was going to the palace next. So he could have sat there and been like, nah, I'm just thinking about how I'm going to pay my brothers back whenever I see them again. Or, nah, I'm just trying to figure out how I can get out of here and smack Potiphar's wife. Because she knows she was wrong. <laughs> you know, like, he could have been all, and they're talking about their dreams. He was like, could y'all please be quiet? Dreams is what got me in here. It was all, and in fact, when he finally got to the palace... And the king said, you interpret dreams. He told him, no, God is, yeah. the, one God is the one who interprets the dreams. So mm -hmm. it is giving glory to him and pray, lift him up in praise. And I'm telling you guys, just try it this week. Have your own little praise yeah. and worship sessions. You know, I know mom and Kiara do it. It's just have your own little yeah. praise and worship sessions. And I hope that helps some. I know, you know, in this time, like Kiara said, we're all in different boats we're all going through different things and I think we focus yes this is a huge thing that's happened within society but far beyond that we had life already that was kicking some of us around yeah. Yeah. you know so beyond the social distancing life has already been real yes. so it's just that thing of how do you 
how do I get through this journey on the classroom side of life? Yeah, and this is this is basically how we do. Yeah. Keep going, and how we have been um, to continue. This Bible study didn't just start nine weeks ago. No. Nah. This Bible study started years maybe ago, ten years ago. Um, we've been getting yeah. together, you know, almost every weekend. Except for when we go on vacation or do something else, then we're just together. You know what I'm saying? But um, I thank God. Oh, man. I so thank my dad. And that yeah. is God. He's my dad. Yep. Um, he has been with us through the thick through the thin. And... I, I mean the hardest of the hardest of times. And his love is real. Yeah. Yeah. His love is real. And what he has given us is at the end of the day, this life that we live here on this earth is nothing but a short period of time. Yep. And you know what we have for our everlasting life? Man. Our life is in love. Amen. Amen. So what do I fear? Hmm. When my Lord is with me, that's my dad. And he takes care of us. Yeah. He takes care of us. And so, I'm thankful. So th that's that's what that scripture is. Death, where oh, is death, your sting? Oh, death, where is your sting? Where is your sting? Where that no? Where is it? <coughs> Seriously? So now that helps me to correct my vision. Yeah. When I look to my father. I'm not looking to all the rest of this. So we're going to keep loving. We're going to keep living. We're going to keep digging into dad's word coming amen, together amen. and um pray that you guys will come along with us yes 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 and as always we're always encouraged to share any of your i know some people have reached out to me or reached out to mom um and if you don't know us personally because i know and again i'm just learning the whole youtube thing through the yeah, analytics yeah, i see that some people stumble across the podcast you feel free to leave a comment we will respond. Yeah, because we're just um, learning it. I was I was wondering that too because I don't like to hear some of your questions or yeah, you know, different things like that. Yeah, and, that would be so cool interaction. Yeah, so. And my last scripture, which fed into the whole, you know, praise them anyhow. It's not perfect. And again, and I love Pastor Michael Toss said this this Sunday. He said, it is okay to say, you know what, God, this sucks. <laughs> but God is good. Yes. But God is in control. He said, but I know you got me. But this sucks. Mm -hmm. I'm upset. <laughs> you know, I'm angry. Whatever. He's like, he could take that. As long as after you say that statement, you remind yourself that God is still good. And he's in control. And with the whole, you know, praise them anyhow, Romans 12, 21 is the last one I'm giving. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Just that simple. Amen. Just that simple. And so, does life get easier? Nah, you get stronger. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's it. Amen. So... But, alright girls, let's get into some songs. Uh -oh. <laughs> song time, song time. <laughs> so, who wants to go first? Okay, go Kiarin. Um, I do have two songs this week. I know we've been listening to one song, but if you guys want to listen to them, mm -hmm. I would be okay with that. Yeah. No, we're um, listening to both. What's up? <laughs> so, the, um, the first song is um, Praise You in the Storm by Casting Crowns. Okay. I love the song, and, you know, we all are in 
the same storm right now. We're in different boats, but we're in the same storm. And so I know everybody has struggles that they're going through. So this is a great song to listen to when you want to praise God and be defiant of the storm that you are in and lift your praise to Him and allow Him to give you that inner peace because it sounds... 62.5 says, only God gives inward peace, and I depend on Him. And so this song is a great song that can help you realign and, uh, and depend on God through that storm. Amen. 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 All right. So it was cast, oh, excuse me, Praise You in the Storms by Casting Crowns? Yep. All right. We're going to get into that, and we'll be right back. Ooh, that was a good song. I was telling Cece that that their lead singer's voice reminds me of the dude from Nickelback. They have a similar tone. Definitely. Definitely. It's just such a... And I was telling them, too, like, there have been times in my life where I've been, like, really sad to go through rough things, you know, like divorce or um, tough stuff at work or stuff, tough stuff at home, and... Um, that song has been just a great song for me to replace my pain with peace and hope and to praise God in the midst of everything um, and be that defiant person towards what the, what the devil says versus what God says is true. Amen. Amen. And so when you're going through stuff, it is good to be reminded not only you can praise God, but that he is there with you. Yeah. So my second song... Um, is a, is, is, I believe that it is a, uh, a newer song. It's not um, incredibly new. I think it might have been out for about a year or so now. But it is a Hillsong song that is new to me, just called Another in the Fire. Have you guys heard the song? <laughs> there was another in the fire. Yes. Yes. So this, this song um, came to me this week when I was, they're just going through stuff, and it was a good reminder that God is there with us. Amen. So that would be my second song this week. Um, we can't listen to that song, or as always, anyone who's listening, definitely feel free to, to listen to that song on your own and let us know what you think about it and if it was inspirational to you as well. Amen. 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 Yes, Another in the Fire by Hillsong. Mm -hmm. Love that. I actually listened to that this week. So we're going to get into his song, Another in the Fire, and we'll be right back. Love that song, and I love that video. Very good, very good. Inspirational. Yes. All right, thank you so much, Kiara. You're Beautiful. welcome. Thank you, God, definitely for bringing those songs to me this week, and I do. It was such a fun to be here with you guys, because... Um, where's that? The Another in the Fire song was one that I hadn't really heard before. I haven't so heard that before. to be able to, um, Tracy here's to share it. Tracy, you can share it with you guys. It's so beautiful. I love the song that Hillsong has. So, definitely a great group if you're looking for them to, like, look into music. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hillsong is amazing. Oh, well, my songs, my songs are old songs of understanding that this first song I Need You to Survive by Hezekiah Walker Aww. makes me think when I had the dance troupe at the church um, here in Midlothian and we did a dance to this and I felt it so strongly and saying to everybody I need you, you need me yeah. We all need each other. And so, if anything, if, if we're at least touching someone here with what we're doing, I thank God for it. But this song, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a deep song for Yes. Me. Yeah. And if you've never checked out Hezekiah Walker, check him out. Hezekiah Walker, I Need You to Survive. We're going to get into that song. Love that song, and we'll be right back. Woo! Amen. 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 Um, that is such a beautiful song. Yes. So powerful. So simple, but so true. Yeah, and I, I do need you to survive. Oh, um, and the next song.
has a little tail with it, just a little tail. My parents are no longer here, they're at home. And um, it was at a time when we had chosen my brothers and sisters and I and that it was a need that my parents be um, moved from their home to a assisted living um, home. And before they left their home and we all gathered in the living room, I, I said to my dad and my mom, I said, oh, can I share something with you, mom and dad? It's a song that's really near and dear, and I'd like to share it with you. And I did a little dance with it. And after I finished my dad, he just, he said, come here, girl. And he just hugged me. He said, I love that. But like I said, this song is dear to me, and that is the short story. And that was with all of my brothers and sisters. We were all in the house and all in that living room. And I thank God for that moment. And the song is called Hold Me, and it's by Commission. Ah, oh, Commission. So good. All right, so we're going to get into Hold Me by Commission, and we'll be right back. That was such a good one. Yeah. Good memories. Yeah, and even though my, my parents aren't here to hold me, as I said, with our Bible studies and everything else, God has been holding me. Amen. He has been holding me, and He will hold any of you who want Him to hold you. Amen. He will hold you. I, 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 I say this with confidence. Trust in Him. Lean not on your own understandings of how He should hold you. He's going to hold you in a way that you never could imagine. Yeah. And He will hold you and bring you back to yourself and bring you back together. Amen. Well, the two songs I have. <laughs> the first one, I actually dropped like two days ago. And when it dropped, I was like, this song goes dumb, stupid, hard. And I'm just like in my seat like, oh my gosh. Like, just bopping like, oh Yes, yes, go off, go off, go off. And mom is like, what's happening? Because she was sitting behind me. So I unplugged the headphones so she could hear, not realizing that she didn't understand what they were saying. She just heard these guys like talking super fast. And, da -da 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 -da. and I was like, oh, okay, mom, this is what. But in this song, it's a song that they released uh, by Ryan Lamar called Relief, featuring No Big Deal, Canon, John. Give Givez, Givez, <laughs> Byron Wayne, and Jack Red and Chris Noel. It's like everybody's on it. But in the chorus of the song, he says, I left the perks alone, but all of my pain is gone. I found relief. And I explained to my mom that for this generation, there were a lot of secular rappers who were really pushing Percocets and basically glorifying being addicted to drugs. And so to have these guys come out and they look like, I asked my daughter and I said, don't these look like guys mommy would have hung out with? And they're like, yeah. And I said, but they are loud and proud professing the name of Jesus and his love and walking in it. And they're sharing their story like, yeah, I did that. I Listen, did I know better? Nope. But this song is so dope. If It is a rap song. Okay. But it's Ryan, Ryan Lamar relief. We're gonna get into that right now. Oh, <laughs> Mama, I look over at mom's like mother and like, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, that song is super deep and really dope. And the one, the one rapper, no big deal. His part of the um, song, I told my daughter. I was talking to my daughter. I said I can relate to that because I know mom asked me. She was like, when are you gonna share your story? And I'm like, which part? <laughs> But um, 
just being in a place that's so dark that your mind is so gone that you have to, I had to smoke a blunt to go to sleep. I wake up, I gotta smoke something or, or take a drink or something and just to go to sleep. Because if I don't, I'm gonna sit here and be just thinking. As you said, if I can't keep them from something, I can keep them busy. I'm gonna keep you busy. Your mind, your mind is all thinking about stuff that you can't change, things that you can't. Because he can't create us. But that part of that song, I was like, that really, 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 and I, the relief to actually have relief from that. If you've ever had like a chronic pain. And the moment they give you something where you have relief from it, you find rest. You just want to close your eyes and like, oh my gosh, I can actually, <sighs> the relief when I finally really started to build a relationship with the Lord and just really, really open up and try him, the relief was beyond any other substance that you know for me i can only speak for myself for it was better than weed it was better than alcohol the relief the peace and that for me is what made it easy to put those things down because he just let me know this is the reason why i was going to it in the first place and the hole I was trying to fill, he was always there to fill that. But that is that song. <laughs> Just know that the the video is a little. It is them being them. It is a little gritty, but it is really super dope to me. And my last song is the opposite. <laughs> Maverick City Music. One of my favorites. They released one this week called Such an Awesome God featuring Mary Ann G. George. And I was like, everybody in this room can sing, sing. Okay, I see what y'all are doing here. So we're going to get into Such an Awesome God featuring Mary Ann G. George by Maverick City Music. And we'll be right back. Good, good song. You have a moment to look that one up? Just... Such an awesome God, such an awesome God. And this week, I'm I am going to post the link to what I was rocking out to the past two days, which was this particular Sunday service with Kanye and the Sunday service choir in Paris. Yes. And I love, it was so nostalgic for me in two ways, because Kanye takes the songs that he had that were secular songs, and he's redone them, he's redone them. And he's put, you know, just words in there to reflect his walk and his journey where he is right now. Mm -hmm. And so it is really cool because you, I remember those songs. Mm -hmm. But then he also mixes in a lot of the songs that we sang in the choir and like in the Joyful Sounds, the little group I used to sing in. Back then, the songs that were popular, he mixed a lot of those in. So I was like, oh, oh, really? This is what we're doing? Okay, okay. So I'm going to link that in the description below. It's like a 30-minute thing if you have something else to do, like cleaning or data entry or something. You can throw that on, and it's a really good one. Um, so, ladies, to Namam... I, the other thing I'm going to link is because I was going to have us watch The Lazarus Effect by Pastor Stephen Furtick, which, yo, yes. this week, he, it was, and it's from a year ago. That one's from a year or two ago. Okay. The Lazarus Effect. Okay. Where he talks about how we all have a Lazarus. Mm. And. I'm going to watch that. This is my room. Yeah. Oh, so I'll link that in the description but today we are after we finish up here we're going to be watching a message by Priscilla uh, Priscilla Shire and it's titled Finding God's Signs in Your Emptiness Priscilla Shire okay. Finding God's Signs in Your Emptiness it's a message that she gave on Mother's Day um and it's the message that she gave 
when she was um, giving it to their church, to her church. And she also gave a message earlier on, just a quick tidbit on this. On uh, Mother's Day, I looked up Priscilla Shire to see if she was uh, speaking or anything. And when I found out, which was such a blessing, um, it took me to Priscilla Shire speaking at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, which is um, my, home church. my home, home church. And I was just totally blessed for Mother's Day. Um, but the the one I, I'd like to suggest that everyone listen because that was that was dear to me. Um, <laughs> the one I'd like for you to put on is Finding God's Signs in Your Emptiness, Priscilla Shire. Yeah, so that's what we are going to be watching today. And the link will be in the description below. Um, really quickly, if anybody, I forgot to mention this, during this time when we all have all this extra time, if there's different things that you, skills that you started to pick up on or hidden talents you found, I have learned to do passion twists. Woo! Woo! <laughs> I did my own hair and I'm also, you know, <laughs> learning the nails. I'm like working on doing my own nails so budgeting I'll be budgeting there because that cuts so much money like I just stopped getting my nails done all together because who can afford the prices to get your nails done now are ridiculous the nails are beautiful but listen ridiculous ridiculous in the words of Jackson <laughs> so I'm learning to do that and then the passion twist of braiding my own hair I passion twisted it all up for my birthday and I was really excited about that so very pretty <laughs> if you guys have different things and YouTube you know as you found us on YouTube YouTube has lots of different things found some side hustles on YouTube yes yes um and just different things so if you guys would like to share in the comments things that you <laughs> I want to say what hidden talents or skills or things that you're picking up during this time that would be awesome we'd love to hear about it and do you guys have any any you guys you do nail no no okay <laughs> well, Ari did my nails the other day and he <laughs> painted them a beautiful light blue and put red sparkles all over there okay Ari so. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> it was an interesting combination but I was not allowed to take it off for two days oh um, ah! <laughs> no just really like learning that I like being awake, um, and so I get a lot done that I didn't do before. I've been cooking a lot more. Yay! Too, but I found I'm actually better cooking than I thought I was. Yay! That I actually love roasted broccoli. Like I uh, pour uh, tons of paprika and cayenne and chili pepper on my broccoli and roast it, and it is just like the most delicious thing. Wow! Awesome! Awesome! So, um, like, hey! I think that's kind of my day and figuring out things to do outside with Ari, I think, is one too. We had a, um, the obstacle course this week was one thing that we did outside. It was really fun. We ended up literally running around for maybe 30 to 40 minutes outside. <laughs> great, obviously, exercise. Yeah. But also really fun. We just got like a small pack of cones that are like $8. Um, but we were able to turn our whole backyard into an obstacle course. Oh. oh, cool. That's cool. Yes. Well, oh. it is time for us yes. to say goodbye. Yes. And who would like to say our closing prayer? And we'll let the people go. Me? I can do the closing prayer. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mom was like pointing. I was like, oh, okay. Mom, did you want to do the closing prayer? Am I like stepping in on your like? No, no, here? no, no. You're not stepping on me. Oh, okay. 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 Okay.
world and just continuing to provide them with peace and love and mercy and a sound line as they go through this week. And we just thank you, God, with anticipation Amen. of the great things that you have planned for us and for our listeners this week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So we're going to get into it, Miss Priscilla Shire. And as always, we love you guys. Have an awesome, yes. awesome week. And Bye, guys. Yes. yes, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.